is Trivia for Kids, where it's not just for adults anymore. Happy St. Patrick's Day, Quinn! Happy St. Patty's Day! Are you wearing green right now? Yeah. You are! You have green pajamas on. Teal. Teal. Yeah, so it's Friday, and it's St. Patrick's Day. And you don't have school today. How come? Spring break. Because you're on spring break, right? Mm -hmm. We, you had yesterday off and today off, and we had this really fun weekend planned. We were going to go to Minneapolis, and we were going to go to the Mall of America, and we were going to ride the rides at Nickelodeon Universe, and we were going to have this great day as a family. And then what happened? Weather. Weather! And then we had a snowstorm. <laughs> I feel like a broken record. I feel like all I talk about on here is snow days and snow. But like literally this winter has ruined everything, I feel like. It's just crazy. So yeah, our spring break consisted of spring cleaning. Blech. Yeah, black. And just hanging out around the house again. But we did we did get out before the storm and Brooks and Wren got sent off to Grandma and Grandpa's in South Dakota and you got to stay here because you have a volleyball tournament this weekend. So you're kind of an only child for the first time in about 10 years. How do you feel being by yourself without your brother and sister? Good. 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 <laughs> Good. That's it. Well, I kind of miss them and I'm not used to it, but I like it. Yeah. The first morning you were like, um, can I watch TV? Like you didn't even know what to do because you're usually, you know, running around yeah. with the other ones and. But now I think you're starting to like get into the groove of kind of enjoying your own time, aren't you? Yes. It's kind of nice to have mom and dad to yourself for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But we miss them. We'll be excited to see them again when Sunday comes. Yeah. Yeah. So are you ready for some great jokes? Plural. Yeah, plural. Yeah. So these jokes, plural, were submitted by James. Thanks, James. Thanks, James. What? Hey, and ironically, it's about snow. What did the snow say to the man he couldn't understand? I don't snow what you mean. Ha! <laughs> and his other joke is, what do you call a duck with his tail on fire? Thanksgiving dinner. A fire quacker. Ha! That would that's be, funny. That would be a good 4th of July joke. <laughs> yeah. All right. You ready for some trivia? Yes. Here's how the show works. Trivia for Kids consists of five rounds with seven questions each. We will announce the answers at the end of each round. Each new round will have a different category. After the fifth round, we will have the final exam, which will test you on the toughest questions we have covered in the previous rounds. Everyone ready? Let's get started. Round number one, the category is helpful people. Thank you to Mary Alice for submitting this category idea. Thanks, Mary Alice. Question one, which American president inspired the nation with his noble words and helped to bring about the abolition of slavery? Question two. Despite her condition of both deafness and blindness, who learned to read and write, becoming a champion of social issues and helping to improve the welfare of deaf people? Question three, who helped initiate the civil rights movement in the United States? when she refused to give up her seat to a white man on a Montgomery, Alabama bus in 1955. Question four, which Catholic nun received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1979 for her compassion and support of all people regardless of their religious beliefs or social status, helping millions of people who were suffering from disease, poverty, homelessness, and starvation. Question 5. 
Question 5. Whose nonviolent resistance helped end British rule in India and has influenced modern civil disobedience movements across the globe? Question 6. Who was a groundbreaking researcher into the behavior of chimpanzees and became a noted campaigner and activist for environmental protection and kindness to animals? Question 7. Who escaped from slavery but returned on many dangerous missions to Maryland where she helped lead slaves to freedom in the Underground Railroad. And now the round one answers. Question one. Which American president inspired the nation with his noble words and helped to bring about the abolition of slavery? Slavery? <laughs> I heard that too. Abolition and slavery. Abraham Lincoln? Abraham Lincoln. Question two. Despite her condition of both deafness and blindness, who learned to read and write, becoming a champion of social issues and helping to improve the welfare of deaf people? Helen Keller. Helen Keller, her story is so inspiring. Like, for she, she was born a normal child, but then she got sick and like with a fever, and that's how it happened. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. But think about all that she had to overcome being deaf and blind. Like, basically being completely, I don't know, just all you could do was feel. And she learned, and oh, she's such a, what an inspirational lady. Yeah. Question three. Who helped initiate the civil rights movement in the United States when she refused to give up her seat to a white man on a Montgomery, Alabama bus in 1955? Rosa Parks. That's right. I I hate even thinking about the like the way things were back then. Yeah. Oh, it just makes my heart ache. Yeah. That people treated other people like that. So thanks to Rosa Parks for standing or sitting her ground, I should say. <laughs> Question four. Which Catholic nun received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1979 for her compassion and support of all people, regardless of their religious beliefs or social status, helping millions of people who were suffering from disease, poverty, homelessness, and starvation? Mother Teresa. Yep, Mother Teresa. So after her death, she was canonized and became Saint Teresa. What does canonized mean? Canonized is when the Catholic Church decides that your life is deserving of sainthood, like becoming a saint. So she was Mother Teresa and now she's Saint Teresa? Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Yeah, that would be awesome. Question five. Whose nonviolent resistance helped end British rule in India and has influenced modern civil disobedience movements across the globe. Mohammed? No, not the the guy with the brown circular glasses. Yep. What's his name? Gandhi. Gandhi. Question six: Who was a groundbreaking researcher into the behavior of chimpanzees and became a noted campaigner and activist for environmental protection and kindness to animals? Jane Goodall is her name. Oh, my word. I should have known that one. You've heard uh, of her? Yes. Yep. She, I think she like lived basically with the chimps and studied them and, and learned about, yeah. There's a girl that like sleeps in bed with five chimps. She's a lady. Wow. Mm -hmm. Are they her pets? Kind of. Like they bring her to the, they, she brings them to the supermarket and stuff. And, oh, okay. I know. Right? I, I don't know that they would let us bring chimps into the supermarket here. <laughs> They'd be like, get out. Right. Question seven. Who escaped from slavery but returned on many dangerous missions to Maryland 
where she helped lead slaves to freedom in the Underground Railroad. Hmm, I know this one. I know this one. It's at the tip of my tongue. Does it start with an M? Nope. Harriet Tubman. Uh, of course! <laughs> Harriet Tubman also served as a scout, spy, and nurse for the Union Army during the Civil War. She is considered the first African-American woman to serve in the military. Well, I knew, I knew it. I just didn't know the name. So brave. Can count that one? So brave. Can you imagine how scary it was back then to, like, if you got caught trying to do what she did, she would probably have been killed. So, like, the bravery it took for her to, to you know, during the night to help free those slaves, I just... It's amazing. So impressive. What a, what a strong woman. I love Ooh. it. Round two. The category is Harry Potter. Thank you to listener Elise for this idea. Thanks, Elise. Question one. Who makes laws for the magical world? Question two. Where in King's Cross Station does the Hogwarts Express stop? Question three, what are the names of Harry Potter's parents? Question four, what is used to help decide which Hogwarts house a student should go to? Question five, what magical talent does Harry share with Voldemort? Question six. What is used to find the location of everyone at Hogwarts? Question seven. What is the name of Voldemort's snake? Round number two. I had some people say you need to do harder Harry Potter trivia because we've had the we've had a few Harry Potter rounds in the past, but I don't want to make them too hard. I've only read the first four books. Right? So I wonder if you're gonna get these. I doubt it. Question one. Who makes laws for the magical world? The Ministry of Magic. Oh, of course. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Ron's dad works for the Ministry of Magic. Yeah. Question two. Where in King's Cross Station does the Hogwarts Express stop? Nine and three quarters. That's so funny. I, I think that's so creative like they go into a wall they do <sighs> question three what are the names of harry potter's parents james and sally james and lily lily i knew that but, duh. and i think when harry and um Ginny have kids i think they name them james and lily wait what <laughs> oh did i just do a spoiler for you Oh man, that's why you gotta finish the books, girl. They get married. I thought. Wait, does Ron and I'm not gonna tell you now that you. <gasps> oh, you're gonna have to finish them. Question four: What is used to help decide which Hogwarts house a student should go to? The Sorting Hat. Yep. So the Sorting Hat didn't pick Gryffindor for Harry Potter first. He picked Slytherin. He picked Slytherin first. Question five. What magical talent does Harry share with Voldemort? He's a parcel mouth. Oh, yeah. Like Voldemort, Harry is a parcel mouth, which is a wizard that can speak to snakes. Question six, what is used to find the location of everyone at Hogwarts? 
Myrtle's map? The Marauder's map. The Marauder's map. Yes. It I show, knew that. It shows every detail of the Hogwarts castle and grounds, including the location of everyone at the school. That's so cool. Like you open it and then like you can see people's names Footsteps moving around. Yeah, it's very cool. Question seven. What is the name of Voldemort's snake? Nagini. I feel like that's a that's like a perfect name for a snake because you think about that snake slithering around and then you say Nagini. It's like a it's like a good match. <laughs> like you wouldn't want to name a snake like Lollipop. Tom or <laughs> Lollipop. Yeah, right. Nagini. Round three. The category is geography. Question one. This question was submitted by listener Thaddeus. Thank you. What do you call a country that does not border an ocean on any side? Question two. What two countries share the largest border in the world? Question three. How many countries are within the United Kingdom? Question four. Madagascar is surrounded by which ocean? Question five. Mount Everest lies in which mountain range? Question six. What is the name of the large park located within New York City? Question seven. Europe and Africa are separated by which sea? And now the answers to round three. Question one. What do you call a country that does not border an ocean on any side? I don't know. Landlocked. There are currently 44 landlocked countries. Interesting. So if you think about Africa or Europe and Asia, there are countries in the middle that are not touching any oceans. So like Kenya? Um Where's Kenya not a country? Nope, Kenya's a country, but that's not one of them. So like in in Europe, Asia, it's like Afghanistan, Armenia, and then Kazakhstan, but then Uzbekistan. Oh, is Uzbekistan? Yep, Uzbekistan is one of them too. Yep. Then in Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Uganda, Rwanda. So 44 of them that don't touch an ocean. Question two. What two countries share the largest border in the world? Canada and the United States. Oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. Question three. How many countries are within the United Kingdom? 31. <laughs> no, the answer is four. Oh. They are Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and England. Oh, I was close. <laughs> you have to give me that. <laughs> you were not close. <laughs> exactly. Question four. Madagascar is surrounded by which ocean? I'm going to guess the Atlantic? The Pacific? Indian Ocean. Should have known that. Question five. Mount Everest lies within which mountain range? The Himalayas. Question six. What is the name of the large park located in New York City? Uh, I don't know this one either. Central Park. I did not know that. You didn't know that? I have gotten none of these right so far. So within New York City, New York City is obviously a giant city with buildings and stuff everywhere. 
And in the middle is this huge park called Central Park. Interesting. Yeah. Question seven. Europe and Africa are separated by which sea? The Red Sea. The Mediterranean Sea. Ugh, oh, I am so bad at this. Boy, you might need to go back and uh, work on your geography there, ma'am. Well, your questions are just... Are they hard? I'm sorry if they were it's too hard. Fine. They probably weren't, but... You're not in school today. Maybe your brain isn't quite firing on all cylinders, right? That could two be. Two plus two is five. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Round number four. The category is things that start with J. Question one. Which Shakespearean character says, Wherefore art thou Romeo? Question two. What is the first name of singers Bieber and Timberlake? Question three. What is the name of a baby kangaroo? Question four. The maxilla and mandible bones are from which part of the body? Question five. What geological period came between the Triassic and Cretaceous? Question six. In Star Wars, what order can use a mystical power called the Force? Question seven. What game show, previously hosted by Alex Trebek, is now hosted by Ken Jennings and Mayim Bialik? Round four answers. Question one. Which, blah, 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 blah. which Shakespearean character says, Wherefore art thou Romeo? Juliet. Yeah. Oh, Romeo, Romeo. Wherefore art thou Romeo? Where Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Have you read any Shakespeare yet in school? No. No. To be. Or, or not, not to, to be. be. That is the question. I don't know much Shakespeare. I don't even know <laughs> what play that's from or what. Hamlet. Very good. Question two. What is the first name of singers Bieber and Timberlake? Justin. Justin. Which of those two do you like better? Bieber, Bieber or Timberlake? Timberlake. Me too. Because <laughs> he's my age. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Question three. What is the name of a baby kangaroo? Joe Mama. <laughs> <laughs> a Joey. A Joey. Question four. The maxilla and mandible are bones from what part of the body? The jaw? Yep, jaw. Awesome. I might have said maxilla wrong. Might be maxilla. Oh, maxilla. <laughs> oh, Godzilla. Question five. What geological period came between the Triassic and Cretaceous? Jurassic. Jurassic. Dad and I were just talking about we need to watch the Jurassic Park movies. We think you're finally ready. We're we're playing the Jurassic Park theme song in band. Oh, that's I can't wait to hear that. That's very I know, cool. It sounds really cool. Question six. In Star Wars, what order can use a mystical power called the force? Jedi's a Jedi. Use the force, Luke. Question seven. What game show, previously hosted by Alex Trebek, is now hosted by Ken Jennings and Mayim Bialik? 
Jeopardy! Jeopardy. Dad and I like to watch Jeopardy while we make supper. Do you like it or do you just tolerate it because we have it on? It doesn't make very much sense because it's all like adult questions, but sometimes I know some. Yeah, it's hard for me too. The questions are are most of the time pretty difficult. But I still like it. It's mm-hmm. just, it's like this. It's kind of a fun way to learn. So yeah. I'm in. Round five. The category is Pixar movies. Question one. What was the first movie released by Pixar? Question two. In Finding Nemo, who lives at 42 Wallaby Way in Sydney? Question three. In The Incredibles, what did fashion designer Edna Mode insist that the costumes not have? Question 4. The film Coco is based around which annual holiday? Question 5. Which Pixar movie is about two robots who fall in love in space? Question 6. What is the name of the young girl whose emotions are explored in Inside Out? Question 7. What is Linguini's nickname for Remy in Ratatouille? And now the answers to round 5. Question 1. What was the first movie released by Pixar? Toy Story? Toy Story! Yay. Yep, in 1995, Toy Story was the first Pixar movie. Question two. In Finding Nemo, who lives at 42 Wallaby Way in Sydney? The Pelican? Nope, P. Sherman. Remember, like, they find the address on, is it a pair of goggles? Oh, yeah. It's written on there, and then Dory keeps going, P. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way, P. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way. Oh, yeah. Question three. In The Incredibles... What did fashion designer Edna Mode insist that the costumes did not have? Um. No capes. Oh, yeah! Because then they got caught in planes and... Yep. Oh, yeah. No capes. Question four. The film Coco is based around which annual holiday? Cinco de Mayo. The Day of the the Dead. Dead. Is Cinco de Mayo the Day of the Dead? No. The Day of the Dead is Dio de los Muertos. Question five. Which Pixar movie is about two robots who fall in love in space? Wally! Question six. What is the name of the young girl whose emotions are explored in Inside Out? Riley! That, that reminds me of, like, at the end when she there's that boy that likes her, and there's a whole bunch of them. They're, like, falling off a conveyor belt, and they're all like, I would die for Riley. I would die for Riley. I would die. <laughs> Question seven. What is Linguini's nickname for Remy in Ratatouille? Little guy. Little chef. Oh, little chef. Ratatouille is my favorite Pixar movie. I <laughs> So love it. It's I so love good. it. I love it. I love it. Did I mention I love it? I don't think so. <laughs> and now it's time for the final exam. Now remember, you've heard these questions in the previous rounds, but these were the hardest ones we've had. So use your memory and try to think back to what the answers are. Question one. 
who escaped from slavery but returned on many dangerous missions to Maryland, where she helped lead slaves to freedom in the Underground Railroad. Harriet Tubman. Question two. What magical talent does Harry share with Voldemort? Parcel tongue. He can speak parcel. Yeah, he's a parcel mouth. He can speak parcel tongue. You're right. Question three. What do you call a country that does not border an ocean on any side? Landlocked. Question four. The maxilla and mandible bones are from what part of the body? The jawbone. Question five. What was the first movie released by Pixar? Toy Story. Question six. Europe and Africa are separated by which sea? The Mediterranean Sea. Question seven. Who helped initiate the civil rights movement in the United States when she refused to give up her seat to a white man on a Montgomery, Alabama bus in 1955? Rosa Parks. So, Quinn, um, right now you're going to go back in the house and do what? What are you doing this morning? I'm watching a show called Something Bit Me. <laughs> and it's just a bunch of, about these people who, like, get like bit by these animals and then they all survive but it's like it's just, just crazy story it's a reenactment them. of their story about how they yeah. got attacked by wild animals <laughs> and you've watched like four episodes yeah they're 45 minutes long and i love them and now. you yeah you're like i want to go back and watch something bit me so we will end this so you can go watch people get attacked by okay, animals bye. bye thank you for listening you happy st patrick's day yeah. happy spring break if you're on it Woo! Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Trivia for Kids Podcast. And if you have a question idea or even an entire category, please email us at Trivia for Kids Podcast at gmail.com.